This program looks at the reactions of one of our functional groups, and in particular, the alcohols. We're going to look at the oxidation of alcohols. Depending on where you are in the course, oxidation can be defined a variety of ways. The loss of electrons, an increase in the oxidation state, or the gain of oxygens, and or the loss of hydrogens. I'm going to use this definition here as I explain the oxidation of alcohols. Oxidation reactions require the presence of an oxidizing agent. That will be represented here by a square bracket with an oxygen. Common oxidizing agent include things like dichromate ions in an acidified environment or permanganate ions. also in an acidified environment. Let's start by naming these particular alcohols. Um, we've got a three carbon alcohol present in my first example, and this would be called propan 1-all because of the location of this OH group. The second one would be called propan 2-all again because of the location of the hydroxide group. This last particular molecule also looks a bit like propan 2-all however in addition to the three carbon chain I have this one carbon branch over here at the side so this would be called 2-methyl propan 2-all when we oxidize alcohols, the products are determined by the type of alcohol that's present. In our first molecule, I can see that the OH, which is attached to this carbon, that this carbon itself is attached to but one other carbon. That makes this what we call a primary alcohol. Here, the hydroxide group and the carbon to which it's attached, that carbon is itself attached to two other carbons. That makes it a secondary alcohol. And lastly, here, the hydroxyl group that's attached to this carbon, it's attached to three other groups. That makes this a tertiary alcohol. When I oxidize a primary alcohol, so I'll bring along my oxidizing agent, I get this product, also with three carbons, but I now form an aldehyde, propanal. To accomplish this, we've lost two hydrogens, say that one and that one have been removed, meeting this definition. I can further oxidize the propanol in the presence of more oxidizing agent. And I can produce this, a three carbon acid, propanoic acid. This, in moving from this structure, you can see that I've sort of inserted an oxygen in here, so we've added oxygen, again meeting our definition up here. Let's look at oxidizing a secondary alcohol. I form this molecule, where my doubly bonded oxygen is in the middle of a chain. This is a ketone, and this one in particular, propanone. Again, to form this molecule, I've lost hydrogen. If I take it and subject it to more oxidizing agent, there is no reaction. And finally, a tertiary alcohol 
if I subject it to an oxidizing agent, there's no reaction right at the start. So you can see the type of alcohol determines the product. Let's look a little bit more closely at the properties of some of the substances made from my primary alcohol. First off, the propanol is capable of bonding with other propanols by means of hydrogen bonding. My propanol doesn't have the OH group, it just has this, which is a polar location, so I am capable of only dipole-dipole -dipole interaction. And lastly, my propanoic acid has this, so it's capable of hydrogen bonding with other propanoic acids. And I also have this polar site, so it's capable of both. As a result, if we were to look at the boiling points of these substances, I would expect propanoic acid having both present would have the strongest intermolecular forces. And in fact, its boiling point is 141 degrees Celsius. Propanol, on the other hand, with the weakest of these intermolecular forces, having only dipole-dipole present, boils at 49 degrees Celsius. And the one in between then, propanol, 97 degrees Celsius. I'm going to use this fact in separating them. So to recap, the carboxylic acids have both types of intermolecular forces present. Our alcohols have just hydrogen bonding and our aldehydes just dipole-dipole. I'm going to start down here in my container with my alcohol, propan-1-ol. And also present some oxidizing agent. Upon heating, I'm going to convert that then into propanol. Propanol is the weakest of the intermolecular forces of my three substances. It's going to begin to boil and evaporate and make its way up here, unit that's called a condenser. This condenser has water flowing through it, in particular cold water. This cold water is used to condense the vapor as it makes its way up and therefore sends it back down into the container where that propanol now meets the oxidizing agent that remained behind and can be further converted now into propanoic acid. So this particular technique, which is called reflux, is capable of taking my alcohol, my primary alcohol, and converting it into a carboxylic acid. In the second technique that's called distillation, the results will be slightly different. I start again with my propan-1-ol. And my oxidizing agent. It will be converted into the aldehyde, propanol. and it begins its journey up here, but now heads down this way where it encounters the condenser with the cold water flowing through it. It then condenses, but because of gravity, now flows down over here. So I now have isolated my propanol. There is no oxidizing agent present in this container. It has remained behind here in this beaker. As a result, I've been able to separate and stop the process. So that's a quick look at the oxidation of alcohols.